good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you joining us through live stream, and we pray you are in good health. Our gathering chant is number 474 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Lord, You Search Me and You Know Me, and our presider is Archbishop Peter Hunt. you search me and you know me when I rest or when I rise all my thoughts you clearly follow keep my deeds before your eyes all my journeys you have measured long before I speak you hear you surround me Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We come together today to give God praise and to ask for his assistance in our needs. Our gospel today is the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And that we may worthily enter into this celebration, let us call to mind the times in our lives where, like the rich man, we may not be aware of Lazarus' presence or of his needs and have failed to reach out with the kindness and mercy to others that God has shown to us. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that, caught up in the fire of your Spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. 
Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by the water, sending out its root by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart and give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. The refrain for this psalm is, Blessed the one who trusts in the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus told this parable to those among the Pharisees who loved money. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. 
even the dogs would come and lick his wounds. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm that has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The man who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. There is an expression that uh, the gospel of the Lord, the good news of God, comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. And today's gospel passage is one that, uh, for me, uh, afflicts me. It, it challenges me to say, am I blind uh, to the Lazarus uh, that are in my life? Uh, am I blind to those who are in need? Am I living a life of comfort now while others are suffering? And for that, I will, have, will I have to answer in the next life? It's a good thing for us to think about once in a while. Certainly during the Lenten season, it's a time for us to reflect on this. Our Lenten practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving help us to do that. Our prayer hopefully opens our eyes to discern what God is trying to show us. Our fasting helps us to be aware of how others struggle maybe at times with a lack of nourishment or riches in many ways. And our almsgiving is a way of reaching out, of seeking to help those who have less. It's interesting today to contrast the rich young man of the gospel from the memorial that we celebrate as a church today. Today is the memorial of St. Casimir. St. Casimir was uh, the son of the king of Poland in the 15th century. And despite his wealth, or, or, or in the midst of his wealth, he was a man who was known for his sensitivity to the poor and for his good works. Uh, we have quite an account of St. Casimir's life from those men who lived with him and admired him and his generosity of spirit and his his sensitivity to those around him, especially the poor and the needy. He was considered to be the meekest of all men and, and humble and generous in wonderful ways. What is the difference between somebody like St. Casimir and the rich young man of today's gospel? I think maybe we find the answer to that in today's first reading and today's psalm. Both the first reading and the psalm speak about the wealth or the happiness, the blessedness of the person who trusts in the Lord versus the cursed of those who trust in mere mortals. They use the image of a tree that is planted by living waters, 
by flowing waters and who sinks and that tree that sinks its roots down into that water and is always nourished and always bears fruit. We see in St. Casimir a man of prayer, uh, someone who daily was open to the Lord and seeking, sunk his roots into the spiritual life and through that was nourished by God and bore great fruit. Today in the Missalette, the Living with Christ, they have a quotation from St. Vincent de Paul, another person known for his sensitivity and charity for those in need. And the quotation they have there is, Give me a person of prayer, and such a one will be capable of accomplishing anything. As we continue in our prayer of the Mass today, and as we continue in this Lenten season, let us ask the Lord to help us to sink our roots ever more deeply into the stream of his love and his care. Let us ask the Lord to help us that we may be open to allow him to nourish us so that we may bear fruit, that like St. Casimir, we may reach out to those who are in need, that our eyes may be open to see those in need, and, and and whatever our riches or our poverty might be, that we might do our part, whatever it could be, to help others and to share with them the richness of the grace and gifts that God has given to us. God bless you. One of the riches that God has shared with us through our gift of faith is the ability to pray for the needs of our world and its people. With confidence in God's goodness, let us offer to him now our prayers of petition. Let us begin by praying for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders that they and all who have positions of authority and wealth in our world may seek to use those gifts that they have been given for the service of all, especially those most in need. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith, that the Lord will help us day by day to open ourselves to his inspiration and guidance, and that our eyes may be open to know how best to serve him, especially among those most in need. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the poor of our world, those who struggle with hunger or homelessness, those who struggle with loneliness or pain of mis- or misery of any kind, we pray for them that the Lord may assist them, especially through the outreach and kindness of his people. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord, accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. By this present sacrifice we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, me your unworthy servant, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Through baptism we have become God's children, and so with confidence we can pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus our brother taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 6.1 in the Celebrate and Song, Bread for the World. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support and guidance of your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 647 in the Catholic Book of Worship, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.